Canon developed a stacked dual pixel autofocus single photon avalanche diode sensor patent. Well, it's actually consisting of two patents, but what it could see is much greater dynamic range of 20 or 30 stops. This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And to make things just a little bit more exciting, well, I'm giving away a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. Details are in the description down below, or you can watch this video here, but please look at the terms and conditions as there are some age and location restrictions. And now, for the news. Canon News got wind of another very interesting Canon patent. Now this one uses a single photon avalanche diode pixel in the sensor. So what is a single photo avalanche diode pixel sensor thingy you ask? Well a single photon avalanche diode counts the photons that are received one by one. Now a normal sensor stores the amount of photons it receives in storage commonly called a well. And I know what you're thinking. All right great but I don't know what this means, what kind of capabilities does it give us? Is this something new, some new capability? Well, being able to count each photon separately would dramatically improve low light performance. Sensors like that already exist and are primarily used for LiDAR and time of flight sensors. You might be aware that you have them in some of your smartphones to assist with autofocus. So will we see this technology in our mirrorless cameras? Well, perhaps, but we're not going to see it anytime soon. Though I wonder if Panasonic is interested in using this in their new GH6. Replacing contrast detect with time of flight or a better focusing technology would certainly help out. Now it has been rumored that Panasonic has been working on time of flight for mirrorless cameras for many years, but that source is dried up. Anyhow, back to the patents. Imagine that you could stack the sensors so they could create smaller pixels while supporting dual pixel autofocus. The lower stack has a comparator and a counter for each pixel. This technology could bring about 30 stops of dynamic range, allowing the camera to essentially see in the dark, changing how one shoots in low light. With all that being said, remember, this is just a patent. It's a way of protecting the investment into research and development. It doesn't mean that we'll see this technology anytime soon, or we'll see it implemented in a way outlined in the patent. But it could certainly help improve dynamic range and processing speed. What do you think? How would you like to see this technology implemented? Let me know in the comments section down below. Oh, and one last thing, if you think this might be coming to the EOS R1, yeah, I think again, I think it's a little bit too premature to see that technology. But then again, we know almost nothing about the R1, right? We'll just have to wait and see. Last week, we got Canon's financial statements. Operating income was up 49% while sales were down 25%. This week, Sony reported increased operating income of 20%. And today, Panasonic reported their financial statements. Sales increased year over year in real terms, but they didn't break it down into how their imaging business performed. Which is too bad because that's really what we want to know. That's, where most, that's what we're most curious about. And now, let's go behind the scenes. Today at lunch, I shot my AMA video outside. And the reason I did this is I remembered that the EOS R has C log, so I thought, perfect. So I took everything outside, got things set up. I was going to shoot in 4K, but big problem. That put the tripod so much further back that it was in the sun and I didn't have a hood and you know all that stuff so I ended up shooting in 1080 again. So I set it to C-Log, went to put it in 10-bit and guess what? It said, yeah, you're not going to be able to do that unless you have an external recorder because it's a limitation of the SD card. Which, with this camera, I only have one card slot and it's SD so I ended up recording in 8-bit C-Log. But as you'll see on Saturday, it's improved over the standard shooting modes, but it's still not as deep, it's not as sharp, it's not as detailed, it, it doesn't have as much dynamic rain as the Canon EOS R5. And sure, if I had shot in 10-bit, it would look better, but I don't have any sort of external recorder, so I was a little bit disappointed to how it looked. But let's be a little bit fair here. I'm comparing a camera that's worth about $1,400 to a camera that costs about $3,800, and they're separated by many years of technology. So I understand that there are some limitations, and when I did my initial review on the Canon EOS R5, I compared it to the 90D, and I said, look, if you're doing video, primarily video most of the time, then the EOS R isn't the best camera for you, but if you're a photographer, 
Well, that full frame mirrorless sensor, the extra dynamic range and everything that makes it a great photo camera is, is really, really terrific and it's worth considering getting the EOS R. But if you're looking at doing video, you might want to consider the Canon 90D. But here we are in 2021 and what would I suggest? Well, again, if you're doing photos, you might want to consider the EOS R, but rumor says it that we're getting not one, but two new full frame mirrorless cameras from Canon for the R system. One of those will be replacing the RP going to be list for around $899. But there's going to be another camera that sits between the EOS R today and the R6, and it's going to be mid-priced and mid-capable, so probably somewhere around, I don't know, $1,600 to $1,800 and have, and certainly be more video and photo capable. So if you are interested in the EOS R, you might want to consider waiting to see what we hear about these. Uh, wait till about June. We should have, we should at least have leaked specifications at the very least, or maybe even a formal announcement by then. So um, yeah, there's that. And as far as my R5 goes, I haven't received any information on what they're repairing yet. Apparently um, when it went to Canon, it went to their main building and then every day they do a shipment and it goes from there to the repair center. So I'm still waiting for the repair center to get it. Hopefully they're, they're gonna get it pretty soon. They're gonna turn it around, find it. Ah, oh, yeah, hmm, it's just this, fix it and then get it back up here. There's a chance I could get it by Friday, but at this point, it's not looking very good. It looks like I might end up getting it back maybe Monday or Tuesday of next week, but I really do miss the R5. It's, you know, having it out of my hands for about three or four days now, I really do miss it. I miss the capabilities. I miss how much more video capable and photo capable it is than the EOS R. And I'm thankful to have the EOS R, don't get me wrong. I really appreciate how Neil at Canon has come forward and helped me out who's um, taking lead on this, taking point on this. Um, you know, I really am very thankful for that. But it, it's funny how when you buy something that's above what you were using before, and it, and it took me months to get used to the R5 because I had this 70D, and you're talking about multiple generations of technology, plus you're moving up into a professional level camera. But I'm now getting to the point where I'm starting to feel at home with the R5. I feel like it's my camera. I can make it dance, I can make it do things, and I only bump in and stub my toe every now and then. So I really do, do hope to have the R5 back soon. Um, and as soon as I do, I'll let you know. I'll let you know how the whole experience went. So I can't wait to get it back. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128 gigabyte AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards, along with a dual UHS-2 SD card reader. Or you could win a Ulanzi LED light package with accent lights, underwater lights, and various other flat panel lights to help you expose your subject or to help you get started with the YouTube channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers. Then I'll offer up a different prize every 10,000 subscribers until the channel reaches 100,000. At which point, I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks very much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.